Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Dirty Derbs YouTube channel. So today we got something a little different. This is my buddy Nick's car, and Nick is my video editor. He has edited uh, probably 90% of my videos. And him and I uh, came to agreement when, we, when I first started the YouTube deal that he would do uh, X amount of videos and I would help him with this Corvette when the time comes. Well, it's time to pay my dues. And so today we are going to be doing heads, cam, intake, uh, new balancer, uh, oil pump and timing chain probably, and maybe a few other goodies. So this is his 97 Corvette, uh, stick shift car, stock motor with exhaust, right? Yep, bolt-ons, uh, yeah. Just a couple bolt-ons, you see the, the uh, BBK intake and uh, it's got headers and stuff on it, so. But he has been really prepared. We got gaskets cam uh, lifter trays push rods and then he had these heads done these are 243s that have been ported and springs and they've fully been gone through and uh, they're ready to be put on ls6 intake to get rid of the it's just ls1 and ls2 intake on here now ls1 intake on there so now we're doing the ls6 and with these cars uh, they have issues with balancers coming loose on the crank so I told him if, if we're gonna be in there we might as well replace the factory balancer with a, uh, at least a summit one uh, SFI and then an ARP bolt and I think we're gonna have to uh, pin this crank I've had to do that a couple of times oh this one's got a, a keyway in it so gotta look into doing that head studs and then uh, you know just a couple of gaskets so this is definitely not going to be a tutorial on how to do this stuff because I've only done it uh, a couple of different times on Corvettes, but uh, at least I figured I will film the uh, adventure that we're going on. So we'll do a we'll do a startup on it a little before and after on the exhaust to you know get the full effect, and then once we get all these parts on, I'm gonna have Devin Shannon come over and put a tune put a tune on this thing but Nick why don't you fire this thing up real quick Yeah, sounds great. Yeah. All right, well, we're gonna get started on this thing. We're gonna pull this hood off. We'll probably just set up the time lapse and start ripping parts off this thing. All right, guys. Well, as you can see, we got the heads off this thing. Uh, almost all the front accessories are off. Um, everything came apart pretty easy. The biggest 
pain in the butt was like the power steering stuff uh, in alternator bracket, which is pretty silly to me. You gotta take literally everything apart. You couldn't just take the bracket off, but you gotta take the pump off the bracket to get the bracket off of the head and yada yada. But no big deal. Um, so we're going to probably go get some lunch. We might need to put some new lifters in here. The lifters in here are perfectly fine. Um, it just, it's almost kind of silly to not put brand new lifters in if we're this, you know, far into it. So he's, everything else he has is brand new. We might as well just spend the money and put some lifters in it. So we'll probably grab some after lunch. And then uh, at that point, we'll probably throw this thing on the lift and start getting the power steering rack off uh, to get the balancer off so we can get inside the front of the motor and we'll keep chipping away at it. So we got this thing up in the air and we had to get the steering rack and pinion out to get the balancer off. So if you've never had a Corvette or worked on a Corvette, you cannot do uh, you know, like fix your balancer, pull the timing chain cover off until the steering rack is out. I'm sure for all you Corvette guys, you obviously know that already, but you have to loosen up the carriage bolts. There's four of them and then drop it down just a hair and then slide the rack and pinion out the driver's side. So we did all that and it's pretty easy. I've got all the timing chain cover bolts off. So this cam is pretty much ready to come out. So we're gonna lower it down, pull this cover off, pull the gear and chain off, and then uh, get that cam out of there. Water pump bolts. Oh, we got pull lifters on that side. Oh yeah. That would have sucked. Yeah, we got one. Good side. That's that's how much came out on the other side as well. Just one. You just need a magnet. Oh yeah. Can you loosen up that other um, yep. bolt on that tray? Hold up, grab this tab here. Yep. And just give it a wiggle. Oh, nice. Oh. You can get in. <laughs> Beginner. Oh, yeah. Well, there aren't like that on this. Come on. Oh, see there. I need a magnet to grab my magnet. Oh boy. Yeah. And we'll just use this magnet. <laughs> Lifters out. Ow. A couple spins, make sure she's all lubricated all the way around. Oh. Hmm. She got some damage. Interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. 
Hmm. There she goes. You had good oil pressure, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, this wouldn't have oil pressure issues. It's just, it's to the point where it would have eventually broken down more and then tore up the lifter. Uh, the lifters looks like fine. Looks yeah, fine well, too. we'll have to yeah. inspect those lifters a little closer now. I do like a slow twist and pull process when I do it. So close. Oh, uh, literally. I probably need your help. Oh, there you go. <laughs> tight fit. Yeah. It is tight fit. Damn, this thing is. After getting this cam out and checking it out, and almost every lobe or at least maybe half of them, I'll say, they've got a little lip starting from the lifters. It's like the cam material is breaking down. And we didn't pull this out because we thought it needed a cam. He was just wanting to do an aftermarket cam and, and better heads, so we didn't even know this cam was like this. So we caught this thing at a pretty good time. The rest of it's got a little bit of wear and tear, but this car does have 120,000? 115,000. 100, 115,000 on it, so it's... Not like it's low miles or anything, but yeah, like this lobe down here is pretty bad. I don't know if you can see it on camera. You can see where the lifter has been riding in it created a little lip there. Maybe like a, not much, like two or three thousandths of, or something maybe. I'm just guessing, but almost every one is like that. That's kind of wild. That could be, I mean, that could be like oil, the type of oil, cheap oil or something they were using, but. Luckily, we got a brand new stage three BTR cam that we're about to stab in it right now. And then also, it kind of looks like maybe somebody has been in here before. Uh, I know that this is already the thicker LS2, LS2 style chain. So somebody may have already been in here to you know, do a timing chain and a pump or something. So uh, we may switch this out, we may not. We'll see, see what he wants to do, but. This engine looks really clean on the inside. Okay, we did decide to pull the oil pump out and it was like 10 million times easier than I really expected it to be on this car. Uh, sometimes you have to drop the oil pan down to get the pickup to bolt out. Luckily, his pickup to bolt was on the upper side, super easy to get to, and the tube was able to move out of the way to slide the pump out really easy. So. Uh, he did have a pump. It's a Melling 10 295 and For priming really I just pour a bunch of oil down the hole and spin it a bunch and then obviously make sure it's got a brand new o-ring in it, so we're gonna Oil this thing up put a new o-ring on the pickup tube and then slap it all back together Oh, and time chain. So we got the new chain on uh, I just put this bolt up here to hang the chain from so it's not falling down into the pan here but I also, I do uh, grease on the O-ring, just a really good security to make sure you don't pinch it or mess it up. So clean the block surface and clean everything that we need to before we put the new pump on and we should be good to go. All right, guys, we are closing up day one here. We got the front end all together, got the new balancer on, the ARP bolt in, torqued down, and we are slapping the heads back on it right now. So not bad with a day's worth of work. We've probably been on this uh, probably less than eight hours total. I think it's gotta be a little bit more. There it goes. Okay, yeah, back to what I was saying. So we got the heads just sitting on there. 
the new cam is in, it's in time. We got the new balancer on. Um, probably a little less than eight hours in this whole deal so far. And I kind of assume that we'll be on this maybe half a day tomorrow or so, but we're about calling it quits on day one, all within a day's good work. So we'll catch you tomorrow. All right, guys, day two of our little adventure doing the heads cam intake on my buddy's 97 Corvette. We are getting ready to put this thing back together. Uh, first thing I noticed this morning when I was gonna bolt the heads down is that we uh, ordered the wrong head bolt kit. So we gotta go up to Winter Circle and hopefully they have the right head bolt kit for this year of block. So right now we're just going to start assembling this thing. Um, there's a lot that we can do before we even get to the head. So we're gonna put the whole steering rack back in it, the radiator and the fans water pump. Uh, there's a lot we can do to try to clean up the shop here. We got parts everywhere, rack and wheels and tires and radiator and sway bar and wheels and parts everywhere that we can throw on this thing before we go get our head bolts. So we're gonna keep chipping away and uh, start assembling this deal. Hopefully have her buttoned up today, no problem. Another one of those deals that I do a twist. Mm. I rotate and twist on its way in. Right. Yeah. Mention out. Uh, there she goes. Get it lined up in these holes here. Maybe. This one's really tight. Yeah. Hmm. Nothing like a little pry bar persuasion. Uh huh. Is she wet though? plugged in, tighten up those bolts, put in our yep. outer tie rods. And we can put our wheels back on. Let's eventually get new end links because they're all shot. Are they? <laughs> oh yeah, they're yeah, when you were taking off this one, the rest of the bushings were just falling apart. I'm like, oh, that's, okay. eh. My, my other deals right now. Weight reduction, you don't need to Yeah, bushing. I mean, you know, what are, what are bushings? Islands or the stars? Yeah, these ones. Uh, the stars were for the. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Yep, the end links. Yep.
it's gonna be really nice to find out that that sway bar link might not go on <laughs> if the tie rods are on. It might not slip through there. I bet it will, but ah. I guess we'll see. Yeah, that's. And then we'll tighten up these bolts. the radiator in and the fans on then we'll put the sway bar link on oh actually we need to tighten up our carriage yeah it's still low let's do that Let's put the radiator in. Okay. All right, guys, we pretty much got her whipped out. So I don't think I really explained what all we were putting on the car. So we went with a BTR stage three cam. We went with a set of ported, polished, uh, built-ish heads, uh, 243s. Now with doing that, we got rid of the 97 year only perimeter bolt heads. So that means we had to get different valve covers. Luckily I had these valve covers and coils and stuff here at the shop. And we've got those on there. We did dual springs, of course. What else did we do? Mm, melling oil pump. Yep, we did the melling. Trunnion upgrade. Yep, uh, trunnion upgrade. We did the melling oil, oil pump. And that's pretty much about it. Stuff. new push rods and you know any, anything in between so this thing's all buttoned up we've got antifreeze in it and i think we're about ready to fire it up now of course this thing is going to need a tune but uh sometimes on cold starts you can get away with hearing it uh i don't feel that it's going to hurt anything whatsoever devin shannon is coming to tune this thing today so it's not really that big of a deal we're going to try to start it we're going to um get our oil pressure up and make sure that's all good to go. So, what do you think? You wanna fire it up? Sure. All right, well, let's... Yes, yes, check oil pressure right away. Yeah. And it's gonna take a second. So, yeah. it's gonna take, you know, I mean, 10 seconds. Right. If we don't see it in 10 seconds, shut her down, but. Ready? Yes, sir. Give her some 
and pepper. <laughs> yeah, I expected that. Yeah, Once it warms up, the uh, O2 sensors are gonna kick in and it's not gonna wanna idle at all. Watch your door. All right, guys, well, that's about it. Um, we're probably gonna do a little uh, tuning when Devin gets here, of course, and then uh, we'll film that as well. So, and then uh, maybe Nick will do some cool drone footage of his own car and some audio clips of that. All right, guys, Nick here Don't! on behalf of CJ. Um, so it is Wednesday, about a week after we finished everything up. I had just finished getting everything ready this morning for the car. I am about to go to Muscatine, Iowa to go meet up with Devin Shannon to finish tuning the car. The car does have just a base tune on it. It was enough to drive home, um, which it drove home fine. Obviously, I didn't do anything crazy with it. Um, so it's got a fresh oil change. I plumbed the PCB and all that stuff to my catch can. I just tidied up a couple things that, little small minor things that need to be fixed up and done. Um, obviously made sure everything was squared away before I go over there. So, and everything is good. And I just kind of went through, did some final checks, make sure, you know, oil pressure is good, oil level is good, everything is solid. So, yeah, so stay tuned. I'm about to make my venture over there and then I will film some stuff when we get there, we kind of go over maybe the tuning process and um, a few other things, and then we'll see. We're back. We're in the garage. Just spent five, six hours tuning a muscatine. I unfortunately did not film anything in the process. It was a pretty hot day, about 89 degrees, my little sticky mount for the car. It wasn't really working out for me, so I just kind of set that aside and um, kind of figured, hey, I. You know, we just need to get this done. Plus, I had to take up the top. Since I currently don't have AC, I think my condenser is leaking. Or maybe I have a bad straighter valve. I'm not sure. I still got to figure that issue out. But that's really the least of my worries right now. The car is tuned. car runs great. Um, One small issue I did have when we put the wideband in. Then we took the wideband back out. My O2 sensor back in. Uh, we did kind of forget to zip tie the sensor up, so in the process it did get melted a little bit. So I am still currently in open loop. Um, I will have to eventually go back once I kind of get all that figured out and we'll do some finessing with the tune. Um, everything went pretty good. The car rips pretty hard. Um, I was kind of honestly a little surprised. The car runs great. I Drove it there in a bass tune. I drove it, drove it back. It was about mm, 40, 45 minutes both ways. Car runs, runs great. I did a couple rips on the interstate. Uh, really, it runs like probably the best I've ever had this car run. So I bought this car, a little backside, backstory. I bought this car for a pretty good price up in the uh, Chicagoland area. It was kind of hobbled together. The guy didn't really know. He kind of bought it with a couple a lot of issues wrong with it he didn't really want to put a lot of money in it so what i found out so the car when i bought the car the car ran kind of kind of rough so i said okay it had bolt-ons so my first instinct okay well maybe it just needs to be the tune needs to be brushed up maybe it's just you know whatever um so i sent the, the pcm i believe i don't remember pcm or whatever ECM or something. I, this is my first LS car, so you gotta kind of forgive me. I'm backstory. I'm a Hamahana guy, <laughs> so it. Uh, Gay. Yeah. I will probably eventually make my way towards CJ in the next few days or so. We'll kind of go over everything. I'll drive around a little bit. Maybe I'll give like my first impressions or my thoughts and yada yada yada. I kind of have some talk about the car. Obviously. I gotta get the O2 sensor issue fixed, and uh, I still have a a Tilton master cylinder to put in because mine is pretty crap. The pedal will go dead from time to time when I bang gears, and obviously that's kind of some very minor issue. But 
it's an issue nonetheless, and I want the car to be as reliable and uh, and fun as it can. So I can't really say too much about that. But in the meantime, I will leave it at that, and hopefully in the next few clips, I'll be with CJ at the next part. All right, guys, welcome back. So we got Nick back here at the shop, and... He got it tuned a couple of days ago and he's been driving the car and so far you know no issues uh they worked out all the little kinks and bugs with the tune and and uh, so so far what's your first impression of it uh well with the bad i was really really surprised um by the power like, like just the power change from like down low um you know so before everything was done the power band was oh, well it really fell off around 4500 and then just kind of fell on its face all the way up to about you know 6000 and now the power band it just kicks in about 4500 5000 just just rips all the way up until red line it like first time when we tuned it initially it uh it really surprised me because i was not expecting it and i i, I bounced off the the rev limiter a few times i'm like holy crap yeah. like I, I was like <laughs> like that it's quite a change yeah good deal mm -hmm. yeah this camshaft should carry the power all the way up 7,000 RPM. Mm -hmm. So you know, the head's uh, built to handle it too, obviously. So yep, probably. yep. The valve train is is uh, all good for it. You know, good push rods, good springs. So it'll carry the power all the way up there. Mm -hmm. So how's drivability so far? Pretty good. I mean, really drives like stock. I mean, there's um, still a little issues down low. We got to try to tune out and figure out with the you know, the bucking. Yep. Um. So like obviously like highway speeds. If I go in a six gear, that puts me right around. Uh, about 1200 to 1400 at, at mm -hmm. you know 70 miles an hour so i try to stay on six gear for now because it will buck a little bit like, yep first gear obviously being the worst but yeah it's a lot better than what it uh originally was so i mean i'm sure yep. we can you know kind of get it dialed in a little bit better but yeah it's it's not awful yeah big cams with stick shift cars is sometimes harder to uh tune in that area so uh there's no doubt in my mind that Devin will get that sorted mm -hmm. out and get some of the bucking out of right. it and um and then a lot of that is also getting used to it too mm -hmm. so sometimes you can uh drive through it or just apply the gas and throttle or the clutch and the throttle all right i think we ran out of store space on the last part i uh kind of forgot to delete some stuff so might be a little a little weird transition but that's all right um that's all right yeah, let's go for a rip and give the yeah. people what they want to hear oh yeah That sounds so good. Oh yeah. You gotta like tune really down in where it's like Chopping. just wiggles. That's how it's supposed to sound. That's how yeah. it's supposed to feel. Oh I know. I definitely can tell I still have a little bit of a exhaust leak sometimes. Yeah. Just minor things. Yep. Oh, uh, yeah. 
either way. Go left. once we get outside and uh, let this thing rip. She needs a bath. pretty nasty and of course as soon as we started somebody was pulling down the hill and uh, started watching hopefully they're friendly she sounds nasty yes sir she sounds good all right guys that's probably gonna do it for today's video um, not super exciting, but it's pretty cool. Do a cam swap on a vet, heads cam intake. Sounds good. Um, now this is partially what I do uh, for a living. Uh, so if you're looking to get 
a cam swap or uh, anything of the sort, you just holler at me and let me know. So thanks for watching and subscribing. I appreciate you. I'll catch you on the next one.